24 years after New Orleans police officer had her killed, Kim Groves' children receive a $1.5 million settlement. Groves, 32, was shot in the head just blocks from her home on October 13, 1994. The fatal attack came less than 24 hours after she filed the complaint against Davis, claiming she saw the crooked cop pistol whip a teen the day before. After being tipped off about the complaint, prosecutors say Davis conspired with a known drug dealer and hitman to kill the mother. A federal probe in a drug racket operated by Davis prior to Groves' murder revealed that he and other officers were being paid to protect drug dealers, according to um, Tom Spicane. Groves' death was plotted and celebrated over the phone lines tapped by the FBI. Rowdy Nation TV, welcome back to the channel. Do me a favor, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. So anytime I drop a video, you guys can be notified. And also, I'd just like to say Happy New, to, uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Let's get to it. Lynn Davis was a cold-blooded killer, a bodyguard to drug traffickers, and most importantly, a New Orleans police officer with such a fearsome reputation that he was known as the Desire Terrorist, an appellation he earned by cracking skulls and robbing drug dealers in the Desire Projects of New Orleans Ninth Ward. At least 70 citizens' complaints were filed against him. His superiors declined to take action on these grievances. It's October 12, 1994, and the FBI are monitoring conversations between Davis and Paul Cool Hardy, a notorious Ninth Ward drug dealer and an avowed hitter who earned a good living as a street assassin in addition to moving fair amounts of cocaine across the city. Getting the wire on Lynn Davis was straightforward. An FBI agent posing as a crack cocaine dealer gave him a burner phone to keep in touch with his uh, future drug business associates. Now this action was part of Operation Shattered Shield a campaign by the U.S. Department of Justice to ferret out crooked cops in the New Orleans Police Department. It began on Christmas Eve, 1993. Officer Lynn Davis had long since given up any pretense of following his oath as a public servant. He was recorded on wire saying, for example, that the police force lost him a long effing time ago and he was just there in uniform. But well, sure, not for the police, uh, not for the police, not no more. He would add that he was on this BITCH strictly to get what I can get, use my job to benefit me. He was also on tape firmly exclaiming, F the citizens, 1994, saw an unprecedented 421 murders take place in the city, but one shocked even the most jaded of New Orleans. The death of Kim Marie Groves. On October 11th, 1994, the young mother of three children watched as Officer Lynn Davis and his partner pistol whipped 17 year old Nathan Norwood. The attack by the two officers left the teen bloodied and staggering. The next day, Nor Norwood's cousin contacted the police department, Internal Affairs Division, to file a complaint against uh, Davis and his partner. And they also interviewed Kim Groves concerning the matter. Lynn Davis' cousin, Little June, got wind of the action and immediately notified the officer. Being looking for something to come down, Davis uh, called and told his partner, Sammy Williams, be looking for something to come down. On October 13th, we'll see Officer Davis and a police cruiser and in uniform begin to hunt for Miss Groves with his partner, Sammy Williams, riding shotgun. They kept up a constant line of communications with their hitter, Paul Cool Hardy. David spotted Grove on a Labo Street in the Lower Ninth Ward. Get that whore, Davis barked into a cell phone at 10.01 p.m. All right, I'm on my way, Hardy calmly replied. Groves would be shot from a distance of less than 18 inches. The young mom, thinking it was a stick-up, offered Hardy her coat. It was the only thing of value on her person. After the hit, Hardy, 
Hardy calmly walked away from the scene and climbed into a 1991 champagne-colored Nissan Maxima, his getaway car. Accomplice Steve Jackson drove him away. Hardy's friend Damon Causey was in the back seat. When Hardy phoned Davis to report on his success, Prose Prosecutor Constantine George would say in court trial, at that moment, Lynn Davis lets out, a lets out a sound of joy I can't even duplicate. He is rejoicing over this woman's murder. Officer Davis will later be caught on tape saying, man, that HOE was dead when she left the scene. F that, F that HOE. Good for that B-I-T-C-H. Good for her, rockhead hoe. Davis and Hardy would stand trial in spring of 1996. Lynn Davis was convicted and sentenced to death on Friday, April 26, 1996. The jury spent just 30 minutes deciding his fate. Paul Ku Hardy was accorded the same fate by jurors the following Thursday. That's about all I got on this story right here. Uh, let me know in my comment section, um, you know, do you think that, um, you know, that they got justice, you know, well, I will say this, uh, Paul Ku Hardy, his death, his death penalty case was reduced to a life sentence. So let me know in my comment section, do you think that he should still be on death row just like Lynn Davis? And um, that's crazy, though, you know, and, and he's on federal death row and he's been held at Terry, Terry Hot, Indiana. And he's been in there just been disrupted. I've also read that he's been a disruptive inmate. You know, he was, you know, claiming that I'm a man. You can't change me. And also, I've also heard that this guy, that, I don't think that's the first murder that this uh, police officer, I can't even call him a police officer. This dude is criminal with a badge, you know, that this guy committed. That's not the first one. There's another story I think I came across of this lady uh, was saying that um, her father was... Um, uh, implicated in the murder that this guy that, that that this police officer committed so but that's all i got on that i think that this this uh corrupt police officer deserve exactly what he got you know what i'm saying sitting on death row my condolences man for you know that's just terrible you know she was a witness to um to a 17 year old no doubt at the time man you know new orleans police uh, department back in the 90s man I, they were you know the only reason that this um that this uh operation shattered chill got shut down is because kim marie Gross got killed they were up to like nine officers they had set up a warehouse the fbi set up a whole warehouse where they where these officers were coming and they were it, they were at, you know how you how officers moonlight right at, at a second job they were setting up <laughs> they had officers coming in like it was a second job in uniform watching this um fbi warehouse that the fbi had set up for this undercover sting for these guys right and at the time that uh kim marie groves had got killed i think they were up to like 10 or 12 officers that they were about you know to indict that they had on their list and they said it could have been more because lynn davis he was recruiting officers at so easily they were surprised how easy it was for them to recruit these officers you know to make this you know this money illegally but that's all I got for you guys right now on this case. Rowdy Nation TV, welcome back to the channel. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so whenever, so whenever I drop a video, you guys can be notified. We out.